ever since the acquisition of Grotopia by Ubisoft, the majority of the players know how new and pre-existing issues in the game have progressively gotten worse over the past few years. However, there is one notable problem, a crisis rather, which remains nearly impossible to fix and counter. After weeks of research, writing, and editing, I'm finally proud to present to you my study and my unpopular take on Grotopia's inflation. To keep it brief, inflation is an economic term used to describe the rate of increase in prices of items and services over a given period of time. The majority of the community, especially you, who clicked on this very video are probably aware that Grotopia has been facing this economic crisis which has progressively gotten worse over the last few years. It has continued to make players in the early game feel broke and unable to afford almost anything good in the game. However, the crisis is not actually because of Ubisoft. It's the player's fault. The economies of most MMO games in the market such as EVE Online are largely player driven. As I explained in my other video, a player driven economy is a free economy where players are in control of what comes in and out of the economy. From the get-go, it did not seem that the creation and the expansion of an economy in Grotopia was intended at all. Number 1. Seth and Amumu did not create any form of currency at all to aid with item trading. This is just a speculation, but what players were probably expected to do was to barter. This was seen in the early years of Grotopia before players adapted World Lock as the game's official currency. It is the act of trading items between two players without any sort of valuation or money involved at all. Number 2. Seth and Hamumu did not establish any kind of marketplace or auction house to begin with. Most MMO games like World of Warcraft and RuneScape would have something like this. This is what led to the creation of Trading Worlds instead, which in the long run achieved what the game wanted to achieve. A social game where you can play and build worlds with your friends. Because of this, instead of the game developers building the game's economy from scratch, it was the players who created it instead. The economy expanded from then and now we're facing an economic crisis. To add on to that, in an exclusive interview with Matt Barton, Seth described Grotopia as a game where players are given the freedom to do anything. Here's the clip. How would you describe that game? Sort of, a, it looks a little bit like uh, some, I guess, uh, what, Terrarium, Minecraft, that sort of thing? It, it, it is a kind of like that in that you can build and destroy things, but less emphasis on exploration and random generation. Everything is player created. Um, it has a functional economy. Everything is, all worlds are connected. The player runs stock markets. Some people, there's, there's so many ways to play it because players are given a lot of control, I think more than other games. Players can ruin the game, harass people, um, psychologically manipulate people. There's a, it's a game within a game within a game. Think of Grotopa's economy as cryptocurrency, specifically the blockchain. The blockchain is a decentralized database that acts like a public digital ledger for transactions that occur in the digital world using cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. There is no company that controls the blockchain. It is its own thing. One common similarity between Grotopi's economy and the blockchain is that prices go up and down, influenced by the law of supply and demand. The law of supply and demand is one of the reasons why inflation occurs. By having limited supply with a very high demand, it makes prices increase by a lot. Psst, psst. Check my video on supply and demand here. Take IOTMs as an example. 
since they are one of the most limited items in game. Slash yes, I'm not sure. It does like a little thumbs up above your head. It's like... Due to low supply and high demand on certain items such as grow scans and mag plants, their prices go up by a lot. Inflation also occurs due to an oversupply in the game's currency. For instance, world locks. The more world locks are generated, the more world locks lose their value and worth. And one of the suggestions commonly proposed by the community to slow down the overproduction of world locks are world lock sinks. Money sinking is one of the most effective and common strategies MMO games do in order to slow down and balance out the supply and currency that often causes inflation. MMO games would sell in-demand items and buffs such as potions, upgrades, and equipment to reduce the amount of currency in circulation. One of Grotopia's most effective world lock sinks currently is Locke, to be specific, Locke's megaphones. The decision of making megaphones untradeable but available in Locke's shop was actually genius, as megaphones have been known to have a constant demand for several years, and by taking advantage of that demand, they were able to create an effective world lock sync. That is how I believe world lock syncs should be created, since they cannot just simply sell untradeable items out there and expect that thousands and thousands of players would buy that item. The problem with items, especially cosmetics sold for diamond locks on Lockhaze shop, is that it wouldn't create a constant demand unlike Lockhaze megaphones. Players must be given an incentive, a reason for them to spend their world lock. One common misconception that most players have is that when wealthy players spend a ludicrous amount of world locks for something, it makes that something an effective world lock sync. This is false. Here's a diagram to show what's happening. This is called circulation. It is the overall supply of the currency in the game. The world locks are not being removed but rather transferred from one person to another person. It still exists. It's still there. When you save world lock sinks, you want to permanently remove those world locks from the overall supply. Your world locks are taken by the system and are burned. Not literally burned because, oh, did I forget to say that this is also called a burning mechanism? Because it's like in real life. Try to light your money on fire. Will it come back? No, it's gone. But there is one issue with world lock sinks in Grotopia. It won't actually counter inflation. What do I mean? Now, this may be a little subjective, a matter of one's point of view. However, allow me to prove to you that world lock sinks won't actually slow down inflation in certain scenarios, mainly for items that are always in demand. These are, for the most part, the items in price trading worlds like Label and Buy GHC. This is due to a certain reason that most of you are probably already aware about. You might be thinking, bots, magplants, or Raymond fists. Unfortunately, they are not the answer. While there are also a few of the reasons why inflation occurs, there's a more significant reason. A reason as to why most of the solutions to inflation which are being proposed by players that would work in other MMO games are rendered ineffective in Grotopia. The prevalent reason why inflation has progressively gotten worse over the past few years is because of price manipulation. I am sure that you have heard of the term manipulation in Grotopia already, but if you did not know, manipulation is the act of faking trades to make it seem like a price is rising or dropping, creating a domino effect that would influence other buyers and sellers to buy or sell their items at that rate as well. You'd usually see price hikes in items with limited supply such as item of the month 
and golden items. Well, that is because items that are limited in supply are the items most prone to price manipulation. Supavi, a Grotope performer, writes, The supply of items dictates the price. The more limited it is, the less obtainable it is, the more it will be prone to manipulation. The more players manipulate, the more players realize that there's a ludicrous amount of world locks in circulation. It eventually creates a domino effect which even affects the rates in the black market as seen now today, from a price of $2 per diamond lock to now around a dollar. So even if you remove world locks from the store, it won't actually do anything. Well, maybe it'll do something temporarily, but there's no guarantee that it'll actually bring a positive impact in the long run. There have been plenty of instances which have time and time again proved that price manipulation is notably the biggest reason for inflation. Here's one example. In late 2021, the prices of several IOTMs suddenly spiked out of nowhere with no actual reason to attest why it happened. Two notable items that spiked late last year were Royal Locks and Gross Scans. Take a look at this. Royal Locks used to be priced at below 50 Diamond Locks. Then during the last quarter of 2021, it unexpectedly spiked to over 100 Diamond Locks. Gross Scans also spiked from a price of below 10 Diamond Locks to around 30 diamond locks during the last quarter of 2021. There's only one reason I'm sure of how this came to be. Price manipulation. Supply and demand solely is very unlikely in this scenario due to how quickly prices rose over a short period of time. The influx in prices of items during that period can somewhat be compared to a case of hyperinflation. This is when prices of items inflate to a rate of over 50% within one month. The reason why I don't consider it hyperinflation is because the prices of most of the items ultimately dipped after that. Hyperinflation is a term that I'll get into later on this video. Surprisingly, this isn't illegal. While players argued in the past that this goes against the rules under lies and trickery, price manipulation has remained in the gray area for years. This is one of the biggest downsides that Grotopia's player-driven economy has that I'm sure other games also has. Players are able to use the right to decide buying and selling prices to their advantage. In conclusion, even if you have all of these creative and genius solutions implemented all together, it won't be able to slow down inflation as long as price manipulation exists. Unfortunately, it is not something that you can easily stop nor counter. It is also not ideal to ban price manipulation because number one, Grotopia's economy is a free economy and number two, it would be extremely hard to enforce such rules. Therefore, the best option is to leave it be. Well, you see, inflation is not actually as bad as you think. However, in Grotopia's case, the economic crisis that we are facing right now is becoming more detrimental to the game in general. Let's talk about the pros and cons of inflation. <laughs> Inflation is actually one of the reasons why some players are engaging in the black market. By engaging in the black market, they're able to progress faster and even earn cash out of it. They also don't find any enjoyment in the game itself, therefore they take advantage of the money-making opportunities that the game has. Believe me or not, inflation would be a good thing if these two conditions are met. Number 1 the game is much more enjoyable to play, and number two, the players are given reasons to spend their wealth actively whether they are gems or world blocks. By meeting these two conditions, Grotopia and its players will grow, develop, and stay active. Inflation in Grotopia would only get bad if the production rate of world blocks and gems overwhelms the sinks. As it currently stands, it is balanced for gem sinks at least, and most items are only experiencing inflation due to price manipulation. Inflation also has a few negative effects, but here's one notable con that is currently being felt at the moment in Grotopia. 
players in the early game are affected. They are left out and are unable to catch up with the players that are already in the mid and end game. This is one of the things that's making the game not newbie friendly at all. And this is one of the major problems Grotopia has. Unpopular take, but I don't think the current state of the economy isn't that bad yet. I see only two reasons why players think Grotopia's economy is almost reaching its worst. Number one, the game is not enjoyable. And number two, the game is too profit-centered. Everyone knows these reasons. After all, it's why a lot of people keep saying that Grotopia is dying. While not true, the game may begin to experience a decline in traffic or players online in the next few years if things remain like this. There are four things that Ubisoft must focus on in order to allow them to fix the economy better. Number one, fix the issue of botting. Number two, make the game more enjoyable for players. Number three, make the game more grindable for all classes. And lastly, number four, give players more reasons to spend their currencies. Let's start off with my first point. We all know very well how much damage bots have contributed to the game. It is one of the biggest contributors, mainly in gem inflation. Luckily, the game was able to combat gem inflation through multiple gem sinks, especially during annual events. The rate of the gems nowadays is around 1,000 more or less per world lock. The only way you can make the game more enjoyable and playable for players is by adding new ways for them to earn in-game currencies such as gems and world locks. However, with the issue of botting in the way, these may only be abused and may later on result in the worst case scenario. Hyperinflation Hyperinflation in the virtual economy commonly happens when there is an excessive overproduction in the game's currency. If you think Grotopia is close to hyperinflation happening, you're wrong. To tell you the truth, the inflation currently happening is still terrible and could still get worse. Let's take a look at one case of hyperinflation in a social networking and forum-based website, Gaia Online. As you can see in this table, the prices of these items in gold inflated by 176% within four months. Yes, within four months. That's crazy. Despite of this, they insisted that the economy was in good hands and healthy when clearly it wasn't. A Reddit thread also claimed that it achieved an annual inflation rate at around 1 million percent. This is why fixing the issue of botting and eradicating them on a grand scale is crucial before they move on to the next steps. Otherwise, we'll forever be stuck with the state we are currently in and this situation will just progressively get worse. While inflation may seem bad for most players, I believe that it should not be prevented. Contrary to popular belief, it is a different task than trying to slow it down. Instead, we should adjust to inflation. In the real world, inflation is inevitable. It is always bound to happen. A US dollar in the 1950s is now priced at around $11.93 today. It had an average annual inflation rate of 3.5% from the 1950s to the present. Okay, I'm not sure if this is accurate, but the converter I'm looking at says that it's basing its data on the US Consumer Price Index, so I trust their calculation. If it's inaccurate, well, it's inaccurate. Ugh, doesn't matter, you get my point. There's inflation. Back to the video. And how does the real world deal with inflation? They raise prices and rates to slow down inflation and keep it down. So what does this mean? How can this be applied to Grotopia? Simple, we adjust to it to slow it down. In fact, Grotopia has already been doing this. The reason why Grotopia keeps increasing the gem amount in gem packs and keeps raising the gem price of old item of the month 
every year is to adjust to inflation. This is one of the reasons why gem inflation is not as bad as it was today. As I mentioned earlier, the game is too profit center. I am sure that most of you know this already. Everyone's always seeking for profit. The game that everyone wants you as a peaceful, where you simply socialize with players and build worlds has turned into a stock market simulation game. It's sad, but there's still hope. There's one update that hasn't come out yet that may potentially be a game changer for not only Grotopia's economy, but for the game itself. The PvE Update The PvE Dungeons mode update was first teased by Starkless in 2018 and was brought up again by former community manager Nekare in the early of 2021 during its first livestream. Is PvE coming soon to Grotopia? And the answer is, PvE is in the works. In late 2021, it was officially announced on the forums that the Dungeons PvE mode was in the works after several leaks on the setup date came out. PvE means player versus environment. It is a mode where you battle with computer-controlled enemies such as monsters. Most MMO games such as World of Warcraft have an economy that is essentially built around PvE. Unfortunately, Grotopia as an MMO game wasn't built to be that way from the get-go. It simply was a social sandbox game. Nothing more, nothing less. This is why Grotopia ended up having such a unique economy. <sighs> if you look at Grotopia's biggest competitor, Pixel Worlds, you would see how much more of an MMO game it is than Grotopia. They have PvE, their own currency system, and a marketplace. Oh yeah, about their own marketplace, the Pixel Worlds Exchange, they correctly made it from the get-go with all of those taxes and stuff, which prevented inflation there, but um... It led to deflation instead. <laughs> the upcoming PvE update has extremely high potential, not only in fixing Grotopia's economy, but also fixing the game itself. No, I am not exaggerating when I say this. When I say that the update can fix the game, it will. Well, of course, given that it's implemented right. We want to achieve two different goals here. Slow down inflation while keeping the experience for players in all classes intact and enjoyable. Therefore, in response to one of the suggestions encountering inflation, we do not want to nerf anything related to one of the game's core features, which is also a root cause of inflation. Farming. This also applies to how we should approach the issue of inflation in the present state of the economy. By nerfing items such as mag plants, which is what allows BFGs to exist, you are stripping away one method of profiting from the new players. You'd argue that there are mainly auto farmers in BFGs, but that is why we talked about fixing the botting issue earlier. We want to be able to slow down inflation, but at the same time, keep the available methods for progression for early and mid-game players intact. One thing that we must create in order to utilize the PvE update is economic diversity. One of the ways Grotopia can maintain a strong and healthy economy is by delving into more markets and creating a lot of demand around it. If you look into other markets like daily quests, role quests, epic quests, legendary quests, and carnival quests, players earn a good profit out of it because there is a consistent and active supply and demand. Unfortunately, most markets that are actively touched by these quests are mostly mid-game markets. Leaving the most popular early game profit method behind, farming. While farmers play a crucial role in the economy, it's quite a boring task. You're simply doing the same thing over and over again. You break your farmables, earn gems, buy packs, sell its contents, and repeat. There's absolutely nothing new until you move out of it. I propose that we revamp farming. Here are ways that they can revamp this feature. Number one, 
add new farmables to the game. These farmables don't necessarily have to be gem-related farmables because just like what you're probably thinking, this will fuel up gem inflation. This would be similar to massing. However, they have a much more specific purpose that I'll detail on in a bit. Number two, improve root farming. Root farming is one of the updates that has untapped potential. It was introduced as a new dimension of farming. However, it failed after players found out that it was way more underwhelming than traditional farming. The problem with root farming is that it is being marketed as a new way of earning gems, which shouldn't be the case. There can only be one meta method in farming, which is either root farming or traditional farming. Instead, what can be done to repurpose this feature and create a demand surrounding its existing farmables is by adding useful items and consumables in PvE that would require these farmables in its recipes. The same applies to the first suggestion on adding new farmables. Newbies wouldn't just earn gems from farming, but world locks as well. This would create diversity in farming. These are only some ways that they can revamp farming without having to nerf anything within it. It will create more economic diversity and early game players will greatly benefit from it. In order for this to work, the PvE update should introduce a lot of weapons, armors, tools, and consumables that will be useful for progression in that mode. By having a lot of missions, quests, goals, and bosses that will be fun for everyone. One thing to note though is that in order for this to work, PvE should not be pay to win in terms of in-game currency. In Pixel World's PvE mode, you could easily dominate in the Netherworlds if you were already wealthy enough. Following this path, especially in Grotopia, will only ruin the fun as players get to skip the beginning and immediately speedrun through it. In order to fix this, the PvE mode must have a diverse leveling system which would make it a good way to implement a level requirement system to PvE items such as swords and armor. In conclusion, the PvE update has a great potential to create more economic diversity which will impact and include not only the mid-game markets but also the early game markets. Therefore, the mid and end game players are not the only ones who will benefit here, but rather everyone. Which is one of the main goals that we want to achieve. No one should be left out in this game. And I've suffered from severe brain damage after making this video. Like, my microphone for recording on phone broke, so I'm using this shitty streaming ass microphone again. And I did a lot of research, and I did a lot of recording, and I did all of these green screen shit. And I edited 30 minutes of this video, and I gathered a lot of information and data from also games that I've never played ever fucking before, so you can say that maybe some of the information that I'm saying is inaccurate. I don't know, up to you if you're, if, if you're an intellectual like me. Oh wait, am I an intellectual? No, I'm a dumbass. Any final remarks? Yes, like my other commentary videos and my upcoming future commentary videos. All that I said in this video and every commentary video ever is my own personal opinion based on my own research, based on my own observations, and basically perspective. If you have your own thoughts and opinion on the matter, they're all welcome and they're all valid. And that's all. Subscribe.